Alex Hayes. Alex is uh, writing a paper. What do you what are you calling the paper or project, Alex? Uh, the identity awareness of research data is the um, paper title, and the purpose of the paper is uh, a submission to the uh, ISTAS 13 IEEE Soci um, Technology and Society conference, which will occur on the 27th to 29th of June, Toronto, uh, Ontario, Canada. And, and in Alex is in. Well. Alex has invited me to um, contribute in the sense of the biomass heat transfer system project. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was a project I started writing up into a, um, a paper intended for a similar type of context of, of what Alex described, um, where I was trying to come up with a simple uh, transferable reusable research method for someone to gather the data that is both online and offline relevant to their learning of a particular thing, in my case a biomass heat transfer system, mm -hmm. uh, gather it all up um, and then put it into a sequence that might be commonly called an um, autoethnographic auto narrative. Mm -hmm. from which key points can be extracted to, in this case, make an argument for what was learnt, when, its significance, etc. Um, and in this case, the biomass heat transfer system um, project that I learnt about was spanned over about a two or three year period. Mm. Uh, and from memory, it's written up the, the um, sequence or the narrative, but from memory, I was exposed, I was um, searching for a different topic, information on uh, human manure or waterless toilet systems and composting toilets, etc. Mm -hmm. And uh, came across a person on YouTube who mentioned a fellow by the name of Jean Payne, a French guy who lived a short life but did some remarkable experiments with um, basically compost, water heating and methane generation. So that mm. caught my interest and I noticed that, and, and so on and so forth, but I suppose it started in earnest when I noticed that there wasn't a Wikipedia page, so that made my research of Jean Payne more difficult naturally. Uh, so when I set myself to finding out about Jean Payne, I decided to use Wikipedia as the note-taking space where I um, generated an article on Jean Payne, add to it as I found out more about his system and his significance, and etc. And uh, that's um, part and parcel of, I suppose, normal learning. The difference, I suppose, is using Wikipedia, a public space, and a significantly public space as a note-taking space. But where mm. it becomes slightly more different is that Wikipedia then becomes a collaborative research space. So there were about three or four other people who were, who um, arrived at a similar interest on John Payne's system and, and assisted in defending the article in Wikipedia, adding images and finding videos and, and all sorts of stuff. And I suppose over the course of maybe initially two weeks, we had a fairly significant article on John Payne. And then over the rest of the two years or so was my effort to um, replicate the, the compost hot water system in a project and I did it virtually on Second Life, um, uh, just integrated into an architectural project uh, and then I attempted to do it in real life at uh, a New Zealand polytechnic who was making words of interest towards sustainable alternative energy etc. It was mm -hmm. unsuccessful in getting that project up and then ended up doing it on a, on a smaller scale in my own backyard and documenting it on YouTube uh, and my blog. and. Uh, and uh, that resulted in people introducing themselves to me and assisting me with some problems or some materials, etc. And so far, I've only explained what the online part was. There was lots of offline parts as well, like arriving at the plumber's shop and having a conversation with a tradesperson about what I was doing, and that leading to informative conversations. Going to the local university with a problem I had with chemicals and. Um, and uh, getting some advice on that. So that was probably a bit extended description of 
what's even a, a much longer process of learning biomass heat transfer system according to the John Payne system and all of the um, evidence of that process not all of it but a lot of it is stored online and distributed across Wikipedia, YouTube, blogs, delicious bookmarking uh, and other places and um, so the business of writing a paper was to first write a narrative that drew in all those data points, uh, time stamped with, you know, John Payne video was found at this time, um, etc. And then I'd make some reflective notes on the significance of that video towards my understanding of John Payne's system, or I'd make notes about the significance of my understanding of biomass heat transfer. Um, and the chemicals involved after a discussion with a professor at a university or whatever mm. and lay all that into a sequence of a narrative and then um, try and identify what events were most significant uh, uh, learning outcomes towards learning that system. So I suppose where that perhaps relates to your project Alex is that uh, it is a research project in two ways, researching a biomass heat transfer system, but more importantly for me, the project's turned into researching or demonstrating how networked learning happens the way I understand it, and trying to come up with a method of articulating or, or investigating the significance of that in a simplistic, transferable way so that more people can replicate that. And... Um, and we can, in, in this particular paper, I'm making a comparison between the formal institutions who would like to say they support learning around these things, but uh, mm. when compared against the online networks, they pale in insignificance in terms of learning outcomes on that topic. Mm. But uh, that's fine by, that's just what the comment I wanted to make in the paper. So the data set is distributed in, in your interest area. The data, the primary data that's informing that paper is distributed across multiple online platforms. Mm. And that's that's um, where I'd like to, I've got a couple of questions there for the reader or for the listener and viewer in the, in the near future. Um, in the context of research data where data sets have a, de a defined time of creation and then they are um, a, a secure repository point is sought for that data to rest and then DOIs are issued and perhaps there's an overlay paper or, or a paper that explains the nature of that data set and the data itself is published, perhaps a data journal. Mm -hmm. What you're indicating here, Lee, is that your data is distributed. Uh, what has led to the data being collected is, is also dynamic, it's not static. Um, that you are seeking to produce a, or are in the process of producing a paper that, it, that draws together the key concepts across those distributed and dynamic um, authored points. Uh, how do you think this, or how does this factor or differ, um, do you think, to, to the traditional modes of publication, um, accreditation, citation and reuse? Do you see that your, your model is um, more extensive and more sustainable? I don't, don't know about the last two, two points, extensive or sustainable, but uh, it's caused me to think that this might be yet another front of tension between traditional modes <coughs> and emerging so-called contemporary modes where hmm. I must admit it feels very artificial <coughs> or pretentious to go back to that space and try and pick, present a freeze frame of that in the format of a paper when I'm quite much more familiar with just glancing at the data as it exists and as it continues to emerge and evolve and getting mm. a picture of what's happening there. Um, mm. But having to extract it out into text and place it into a, a sequence as though, it, it, you know, this is a freeze frame of it. I can kind of appreciate the reason for doing it, but it, it just feels a little bit unnatural to go from this space into this space, whereas if I was in a laboratory or conducting a survey, you know, and the and the and the uh, data is finished and needs to be reported, uh, mm. it'd be much more natural. But in this space, it's quite a bit more dynamic. Um, well, could I put uh, it to you that could I put it to you 
uh, do you feel that your data is published? And oh, absolutely. I feel like and it's more published than, um, certainly more published than when I, if, I, if ever I do arrive at a paper and publish that in a paper, it probably even if I was to publish it in the most pronounced uh, journal, I, I'd expect the readership on that paper would be significantly less than the readership I've had over the two years of mm -hmm. doing that project. And do you, uh, consider, do you consider the interaction that you've had with your peers and networks uh, to be of a renowned review, peer review process? I'd say both. Uh, you, you know, the full spectrum, I mean. Um, I've had certainly lay people to trades people um, and, and then researchers uh, relating to that field. I've had conversation and um, and um, banter with them. When it gets to the professionals, interestingly enough, I mean the professional researchers, uh, that banter became face to face. It was difficult to get them engaged online. So, mm -hmm. um, but mind you, I might have I might have been talking to someone who was a, um, a a professional researcher and not known it. Primarily, mm -hmm. what I spoke to are uh, what in this sustainability realm known as permaculturalists, people who are experimenting with subsistent farming techniques uh, and these people were ranged from New Zealand, uh, a couple of places in Australia, the USA of course and um, uh, I, th I think a few other places, uh, mm. I just can't remember at the moment. Well distributed. And, and they, so run, they run businesses and stuff. You're doing, just, just one more question if I may, in terms of the or perhaps to split but associated. In terms of the licensing of your data that you've produced and that continues to evolve in a dynamic state in those environments, um, who, who actually owns the data that's being created? Is it everyone? How does, how does the licensing and ownership sit for you? Mm. Well, the, the uh, data that I'm creating is licensed Creative Commons attribution share alike or public domain. So where I write it on my blog, mm -hmm. it's simply public domain uh, as much as that can be used in Australia. Um, but where I'm taking notes on Wikipedia or writing it up in Wikiversity, it becomes Creative Commons attribution share alike. Mm -hmm. uh, but the videos are referred to on YouTube by other people so the videos on YouTube by me are Creative Commons attribution, but the videos by other people, by and large, are all rights reserved to them. Okay, well, I'm um, going to throw, throw a big question, an open question here now. It's more of a predictive thing. Um, Lee, do you th feel that the, um, the manner in how you, how you engage with others and collaborate, uh, research um, topics and gather evidence and publish this openly, um, under these uh, open license and open data and open um, accord um, um, formats uh, a discernible present reality or is, are we still, we're still in a, 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 um, a tension between uh, the traditional publishing modes uh, which ostensibly have been literature and paper driven? Oh, I, in my view it's definitely in still in the tension space, much the same as it was nearly 10 years ago. Uh, I personally haven't seen it formally shift. However, you and I are having a conversation like this and may be successful in um, getting this uh, argument across and it may last in the space for a while and who knows, it might have a, an impact. But I think so. Uh, there's still in a tension space but I think far more of us are working in that dynamic space and are struggling with how to gen uh, authentically and honestly represent that space in this format of conferences and papers and, and, and what and, not. And academic, and academic profile, I'd imagine, too. All of that academic profile and the um, uh, performance measures in that space in terms yeah. of formal academics and stuff like that. I mean, most yeah. people I communicate with around this uh, exist 100% in the online space and a great many of them simply don't bother them bother with writing papers uh, for, for journals and the like. They're quite happy with simply posting 
their progress to their blog. Um, and in many instances, that, that post to the blog will be written in the format of a, of a paper or a report on research with um, mm -hmm. summative statements and the like. Uh, and they quite openly say, I'm thinking particularly of Stephen Downs here, quite openly say, this is the extent of it. I don't need to go further on this. Um, mm. And he's primarily involved with literature review, equivalent to a literature review, I say, mm -hmm. conducting original research. Um, but uh, then there's others who, who exist solely in that space, analysing um, data, particularly in social media, analysing data, making sentiment analysis or whatever, and posting mm. the report of that to their blog. And maybe, if they're invited, write a paper for whatever reason. Um, uh, yeah. So research data takes on a new face, a new, a new realm. Well, you know, I don't know if it's new even, you know. I, no. <laughs> I wonder if it's just that this is yet, again, yet another example of the internet highlighting how far research has gone away from everyday uh, folk with the people, for the people, blah, 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 and gone into highly specialised spaces, which is great, but then also severing their link and only existing in those specialised spaces and, and not, not coming back. Mm -hmm. For humanity. Well, um, Lee, thanks very much for the, the opportunity to talk about it. As you know, right. I'm, um, you're one of a number of data set cases that I've presented within this uh, formal paper under an IEEE template and, and uh, licensing accord of its own right. Mm. Um, and I can guarantee you that I find myself in this, uh, amidst the same tensions and the same uh, questions that you've raised and I do exist in the similar, the similar spaces to what you spoke of. So I bridge mm. between both and I'm very, very, I was very keen to get an account for you and for the, re for the viewer who in the future will refer off the primary, what I call explanation or uh, overlay paper that points to your data sets Mm. And uh, and in your case, all data sets are resolvable, accessible, and um, at the moment they are. I suppose it does become a question in the longer term: uh, yeah, right. how are these data sets preserved, um, curated, you know, and, and all of that sort of stuff. Recreated. Yes, and you've mentioned the service Figshare, and it might be some some stage in the near future in a position to harvest something from that, and again taking a freeze frame of all that space and. Mm. Well, I've um, spoken with Mark about an idea, a concept that where when a person is presented with an opportunity to either delete their account or to archive it, when they press archive, they enter their details for their preferred repository point or service, such as Figshare, and that allows that data to be scraped, including meta and videos and audio and anything that exists against the user's account into a discernible database that can then be uh, made accessible via or under a certain condition elsewhere. Uh, services go, you know, some services collapse, some services indicate before they collapse that people should take their data from those sites. So a, a, a um, secure a repository, particularly for, if you think about it, how many projects have we run in the past where the project only exists for as long as the account exists for and yet no one has actually ever logged in past the project cease point. So that, that could really ostensibly have been harvested as such and made available under, under the, the same license conditions via repositories such as archive.org that will go on for, for very much longer than uh, that tenuous uh, project space account might. Yeah, um, or similarly, um, you know, um, funded projects in Australia funded by state or federal government and then that work going offline when the elections happen and the funding changes and whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so the, pro the provenance it's hard to know is important. It's hard to know what's significant enough to preserve, but it's interesting to, um, it's just interesting to look at the uh, Library of Congress in the US is in some lukewarm water at the moment because they've been uh, recording Twitter uh, for a number of years and on the guise of a historic project, it's that they're trying to re preserve Twitter to get uh, at the near, in the future a picture on a population at that mm. time is what mm -hmm. they say. But then there's the um, civil liberties groups who are concerned about the various surveillance laws being passed in the US and its coalition of willing. Um, 
Well, I'm very, I'm very glad you raised that because in this paper that I'm writing, I, I do bring in and associate this, this paper, as you realise, the conferences around the valences. So we think mm. of data, think of data valence. Uh, mm. That is, that's precisely what you're speaking to, Professor Roger Clark from ANU. Has been in that field for 20 years, so mm. it's um, very pertinent. Mm. But then you look at an Australian example, like um, you know, following the same idea of the Congress, a historical picture on a population. In Australia, a similar reasoning, but an entirely different approach, and a typically Australian approach, is rather than figure out a way to draw the data out of a popular platform like Twitter, mm -hmm. they'll set up a competing platform like ABC Pool and then ask everyone, don't use YouTube or if you're using YouTube and blogs and all that sort of stuff, can you also use ABC Pool and post your video into ABC Pool as well as YouTube as well as wherever else you're trying to see. Mm -hmm. And I, at the outset, I sort of, sort of thought, well, uh, I couldn't think why I would do that unless they had some nationalistic flair about wanting to boost ABC Pool because YouTube was the bigger audience by far and if I post a video to Pool it might get viewed twice on YouTube, it gets viewed 2,000 times and, and uh, conversations follow. Mm. And uh, mm. sure enough, ABC Pool sent an email around about a year or two later saying we're not uh, pleased to delete the videos you're not using anymore and we're not taking any more videos, I think was one. Uh, you know, so they're already showing signs of you know, bandwidth restriction and concern about that sort of thing. But the premise was that they were trying to capture Australian voice in the social media space. But their different approach was to set up their own system, their own ser service, and mm -hmm. capture it that way, as opposed to harvesting it from YouTube or um, a collection of different spaces. Mm. And being an educational researcher and uh, developer yourself within the network learning environment, Lee, you have seen um, repositories and services come and go, particularly those set up by um, state and federal governments um, in the Australasian region. So what's your, what's your kind of prediction on these large consortium-led uh, repositories such as archive.org and similar? Will they last? Is, are we doing the right thing or should we just be distributing everything as far as we can elsewhere? Well, in terms of archive.org, since 1996, um, it probably stands the test as being the most reliable so far, but it's still high risk. You know, it's running on philanthropic funds. Mm. But we say high risk because it's running on philanthropic funds when I'd sooner say high risk because we're running on federal or state funds. Mm. Um, mm. And evidently, since 1996, as you say, I've lost count of the number of quite important projects that are now offline, uh, costing mm. tens of millions, maybe even billions of dollars in the education mm -hmm. space that now just get called it. shelfware. Mm, mm, indeed. So, um, but then, you know, I'm not saying that we should then put it all in archive.org, but in 2006, I recorded an interview with Stuart Shafay where amongst many things he was saying offering free uh, scanning and um, serving of all files in our library at the place I was working, free. Uh, the mm -hmm. library was struggling to come up with $100,000 just to scan some of the best of their works. Uh, unfortunately, that didn't catch the library's interest, that offer of free scanning. Um, there was a small fine print that um, what they scanned and served for free would have to be... Um, copyright licensed freely, uh, but we didn't even get to that point in the discussion with the library. But it, it's sort of it, the other part of that conversation is that, uh, well, can we set up a server here at the time we we're in New Zealand, can we set up a server in New Zealand, put the, the archive.org's content management system on it so we can store our content on a New Zealand server for those who are concerned about its location. Uh, but when people anywhere in the, around the world search archive.org, they'll find stuff on our servers and everyone else's servers, but the New Zealand content comes from a New Zealand server. Um, like so a, we're just like using a mirror, it. mirror node. Oh, sorry, not mirror, but we're not, on the New Zealand server, we're not storing all the other content. It's yeah. just anyone yeah. who identifies as <laughs> New Zealand content. Um, mm -hmm. So it's just a network of servers distributed all over the world. It's simple stuff to do. 
Uh, mm -hmm. And he was all for that, but at the time, the library wanted to spend um, well over a hundred thousand dollars on their own content management system with feature sets far less than what the archive.org system had at the time. But mm. it led me to a, a long campaign of how can we set up systems that are local that interface seamlessly with these popular systems as they come and go, uh, and if they come and go. Um, you know, we, we, could the National Archive, for example, set up an uploader for videos where I upload to the National Archive because I'm an Australian or whatever, and in there I've got a tick box for, yes, can you send that across to my YouTube account, my Vimeo account, by the way, put it over in archive.org, and yeah, why not put it over in Wikimedia Commons? So you're distributing it. That, that stuff's been around on mobile phones since they became smart. But, hmm. uh, so it, like a, it's, pipe, like it's a always, piping service. Exactly, like a piping service, and that would be an excellent way to intercept the, these cultural um, artifacts that are streaming out to foreign servers, if we're concerned about such a thing, backing it up on local servers. If that system ever goes down, we've got a picture. It's a little bit like what the Library of Congress is doing. We're, we're capturing a picture of what Australian culture was looking like on YouTube at this time, or what Australian culture was looking like on, on Twitter. Of course, we'd have to get around all the civil liberties issues and make assurances and the best way to do that is put the control in the users hands obviously mm. but um, but the, the, before even at the detail of that point can't even get an appreciation of the value of such a proposition with almost every librarian that I talk to it, 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 it strikes them as why would you do that and uh, strikes me as why wouldn't you do that so mm. I, I don't know the long, so the longevity and the longevity it seems to me there are a plethora of things which are talked about in the paper around data provenance, about ownership rights, about the ability to access and resolve data and ability to connect with a range of sources and places in order to uh, substantiate what you've been researching. So Lee, I'm really um, appreciative of your time and um, for no Sunday worries. afternoon we better get back to our families. <laughs> Yeah, or back to this sewing machine as it would have it. That'll be my next paper, how I learned to sew. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Thanks, okay. Lee. I look forward to letting the world know all about our conversation. Ah. Oh, okay. The readership of that journal, you mean? <laughs> <laughs> not, not mine. Others. <laughs> Many others. See you, mate. See ya.